Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Being Wendy. My name is Wendy, aka Mama Dana, and I do videos on motherhood, lifestyle, and anything that I feel like telling you guys about. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button to get notified anytime I post a video. So today we're actually just going to talk about actually not going to really talk. I'm just going to follow um Joanna Kinuthia's tutorial on her I on how she the video is called three steps to perfect eyeshadow back to basics i will put it down put the link to that video down below so anyone who's followed me from the beginning knows for me makeup is a journey and i'm literally just learning as as i go so i started with the eyebrows and then i learned how to do my foundation now i'm going to the um eyeshadow because i have Joanna's palette. I have two palettes, one by Joanna, another one was a gift from my cousin. And yeah, I think let's get into it. Let's see if I can actually yeah, let's just get straight to the video. Going back to the back to basics. So we're video. starting the video. Um, which is this is actually just the second one, but I thought I would go ahead and jump right into a shadow. Even though I've already done one video on it, um where I will show you guys how to do eyeshadow using just one brush. It has many, many details and it's a very useful video. So you can check it out. I'll link it here or down So I'm moving it forward. Here is the brow bone, this carbon here where the eyebrow is. Before I get into that, maybe I should touch on the lid a little bit. Because um, I'm going to be using the eyeshadow eyelid lingo. <laughs> so maybe My I mirror is down here. Yeah, so I hope. So this right here should I put it here? Bone. She's talking about of the okay. eye lid, I so, think. Transition shade. So you remember the brow bone? You remember the crease? Do you remember the area in between that car area that just has nothing going on the below the brow bone or above the crease area? We're going to put something called a transition shade in that area. Now a transition shade is basically a matte note. It's a matte, you're not putting any shimmer here. You're putting a matte shade and most of the time it's something that's earth toned. Something that is a little bit deeper than your skin tone. Not too deep, maybe a shade deeper or, or so. Um, usually my go to transition shade is a light brown not lighter than me but it's always a light brown and what a transition shade does is it helps give you you know that gradient effect that you see people's eyeshadow looks with this is it this is where you get that um gradient look from so i'm going to go in with she said gradient let's see what's gradient um she said use a transition so i'm using this right So, like I said, we are using two brushes. One is to apply the product and one is to blend out the product. Also, what you blend extends. Are we together? <laughs> so, I'm going to apply product just at the edge of that area. Okay, and then I'm going to take the brush for blending and blend that inwards. Don't go all the way because sometimes I see some people's eyeshadows going all the way here. Just stop in an appropriate place, you know, like right 
where your inner where your tear duct is just stop at around that place i'm just using back and forth motions to blend this transition shade of mine all the way up to the front and it's actually moving i hope you guys can see because this is a very flesh toned color but it's it's actually moving because what you blend okay now i'm going in with the eyeshadow brush you remember it and i'm going to add more color and then i'm going to take the blending one and just do the same thing and i'm basically going to keep doing that until i've built up the transition shade to to a pigment and amount that i want by the way guys it's usually best to do both eyes at the same time instead of doing one eye finishing and then moving on to the next eye because you can be able to match the two eyes because when you do one and finish you might finish both and they don't match so as you, you do this transition shape you finish you do the sun make sure they're matching and then move on to the next step so take your time on each of these steps that I'm going to say. So that's my transition shade on. It's quite light. I don't think you guys can even tell the difference. Maybe you can. But it's just a light shade. But not. I'm not saying you put like white there. Just a light aftone shade. Sometimes I also like to go in with an orange. So sometimes I, I'll go in with this. I know it looks quite um, heavy in the palette. But it's, it's, it's very... It's not that heavy when you put it as a transition shade, it's quite light. But for a beginner, I think I would say just stick to the browns, the aftoned browns. So pick a brown that's just a shade darker, just a shade darker or even just your skin tone, just to bring that gradient effect. Also, I forgot to mention, always tap off the excess. So when you pick up your product, tap off the excess, it will help you in terms of not getting like a patchy eyeshadow application and it will also help you with fallout okay now we are moving into the crease shade so usually what you want to do with the crease is kind of like define it and make you know bring it out so you usually put a deeper warm shade in the crease so it, it depends i used this as my transition shade this one and i can probably use this one right here is a deeper brown for my crease shade it will just really really define the crease and i'm applying it the same same way that i applied that transition shade okay. tap off and then i am going to place the, the product at the end like that and then i'm going to take the blending brush and just do the same same thing we did for the transition shade the same same way i did with the transition shade is how i'm blending my crease shade so i'm going to go in and build that up so i'm taking my shadow brush and just repeating the same thing which i'll probably do maybe two more times after this for me to get the intensity i want okay so now i'm quite happy with the intensity so i'm going to use the blending brush to kind of blend the transition shade and the crease shade together because you don't want like harsh lines you don't want the transition shade and then the crease shade each of them in their own like with their own sharp lines so you want to go like in between the two and make sure and marry them basically make sure they are well blended okay so now the third and final step as you guys can see it's it's really said you should marry them blending at the ma marry them i think they're married i don't know if you guys can see the difference because i can let's see easy it's all about the techniques just those two things what you blend extends and it's better to build up than to clean up those two mottos if you live by them you will win when it comes to eyeshadow anyway so lid shade at this point we've only used matte shades guys do not and i repeat do not use shimmery shades in the crease 
or in that area for the transition sheet because you are not going to look cute. Reserve those shimmery shades for the lid. Now this is the time to bring out those shimmery shades. Shimmery. All of them. Bring them all out. So usually sometimes at this point all the eyeshadows you put, all the matte shadows have kind of gotten onto you. I have tissue here so that I can keep cleaning because yeah I don't have brushes like that so you might want to touch up a little bit with your concealer just so that your shimmery shade or whatever shade you decide to go with in the lid can can have something to stick to and can also wow concealer So I have just put a little bit of concealer strictly just on the lid. So now at this point you could either use just your finger to apply your lid shade or you could use a flat brush. So I put concealer so I'm putting mine. I don't have a lighter, a lighter shade. Yeah, yeah, Jesu. Mm hmm. I really hope this thing works because where I'm never ever okay brush like I talked about you could also wet your brush to like if you have a shimmery shade that's just not popping the way it is in the palette you could spray your brush with some water or setting spray dip it and then pack the shade onto your lid and it will instantly pop so i'm going to go in with a shimmery shade a shimmery shade and i'm actually just going to use my finger and i'm just going to pack that she's, she's using her finger so i'll use mine too all the way from i think the i'll do to the glow getter but don't pass the crease like that's the end you're literally just applying this product onto your lid. Now, sometimes the problem with a finger is that it can't be as precise as the brush. So, you know, sometimes you might need to use a brush in case you feel like you're not precise enough. But in case you don't have one, this works too. Because especially at the inner corner, you can find yourself messing up a bit. So now you guys remember the blending brush we had. I'm just going to clean it a little bit on the tissue to remove any excess product. And then I'm going to go in and blend in between the lid shade and the crease shade. Because again, remember, we don't want sharp lines. So we want a nice blended look and, and we want each shadow to look like it's just gradually going into the next. So... I'm going to blend in between the two. And this one you have to be careful because you don't want your shimmery shade to go all the way up. So you have to really, really be precise and kind of just feather out that lid shade. Because again, what you blend extends and you don't want this to extend. So really confine your blending to just that line in between unless you want you're going for like a cut crease look in which case you don't have to do this blending part that's literally the those are the three steps now from these three steps you can do any look you want you can play around with any colors you want as your transition shade as your crease shade you as long as you're, you're using colors that will give you that gradient effect and weird colors can give you that gradient effect like you can transition from purple to blue 
blue or from blue to purple so it's about having fun with it also now another additional step like a bonus step sometimes when you want to do like you know the smoky eye where it's just smoking out like this from the side you can use the crease shade on the outer V you guys remember the outer V here so what you do is the same same shade you have put in the crease you just put it in the outer V in fact we can go ahead and do it so I'm taking my crease shade and I am putting a little bit like, like so in the outer V and then I'm going to take my blending brush and make sure that that's well blended and then now I can build the intensity if your crease shade was a bit light you can always go darker with like an even darker brown and just intensify that even more so the the last additional steps that is just um being extra for you to really help your eyeshadow pop is putting a brow bone highlight on the brow bone you see why it's called a brow bone highlight because it's the brow bone and also highlighting the inner corner of your eye again this is not at all a necessary step you could just leave it at that um but highlighting of course just it pulls everything together so let's let's do it we're not gonna leave it to the sharp lines guys so take your blending brush and blend that out and blend that brown highlight with your transition shade you want everything to just mesh well together and then we can do the inner corner as well and it would. So now I'm going to just go ahead and put steps that is just um, being extra for you to really help your eyeshadow pop is putting a brow bone highlight on the brow bone. You see why it's called a brow bone highlight because it's the brow bone and also highlighting the inner corner of your eye. Again, this is not at all a necessary step. You could just leave it at that. Um, but highlighting, of course, just it pulls everything together. So let's let's do it um, um, my bull. Um, um, my bull. Um, kuna mtu na kio amebeba kwa kiondo anasema ni jenjo nijione kwa machoyo Nikamfuata kibandani akaufichu asiri nikauona uakisi nikauona mara ya pili malaika yakainuka na siwezi nikaamini siamini huyu ni mimi kupumua msiwezi akianani mayo 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 O Marco do Ga, ne a da be, ne a da be, o Oh Lord, why am I so beautiful? So, so beautiful, beauty so plentiful, they can't breathe when I'm... Ooh, guys, sis is here. <laughs> How do you like this look? Um, I hope you liked this look because I actually really liked doing it. And this is my first, first time ever in my life doing my lashes. I have never, I've only had lashes once before and they were done for me. Someone put them on me. So this is my first ever time. So if you see, this one is not so perfect. Gosh. Missy mind. Quarantine many funds are key too. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think my eyeshadow is not so bad. I hope you guys um like what you see. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and follow J Jonah K. And please use Kenyan products because yeah. 
because we really need to support small businesses and our own people right now during these difficult times. And guys, please stay home and learn a few things because after quarantine, we're going to go home. We're just going to, life is not going to stop for a minute the way it has for now. So yeah, learn whatever you can right now and do your best. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. So thank you and bye. See you in the next video. Thank you, God. Thank you. Kuna mtu na kio, amebeba kwa kiondo, anasema ni jenjo, nijione kwa machoyo.